Here are three ways where you can make your drum sound a bit more punchy in your mix. I have a simple drum set here. I'll just show you what it sounds like without any processing, more or less dry. If you're wondering, I just customized a Logic Pro drummer kit using the Hi-Fi Pop, and I just bounced those down to audio to have some more flexibility. So the first thing is to make sure that you are um, running your drum elements to a drum uh, aux channel, a drum bus. So you can see I have a summing stack here in Logic which hosts all my drum elements. So I have all the overheads, the kick, and the snare, and every, everything else that's in my drum kit. So if you're not doing that already, that would be just a prerequisite to this video is to make sure that you are setting things to one drum's aux track and then the three tricks that I'm gonna show you in this video all happen to do on this channel. So let's start with the first one, which is drum compression. So you can use any compressor here. I'm gonna show you um, what I use as a compressor, but I'm gonna show you the same thing you can do with a stock Logic compressor. So I do use a paid compressor, this SSL compressor by Waves, and I actually use a preset, a punch preset, and then I just, just edit that a little bit. So I would go down to punch, and click punch, and then just have a listen to immediately what that does to it. So it's really squishing those drums, right? This is bumping up to negative eight or 12. Watch when I bump this down to negative 15. If you don't hear that compression really working, that's okay, but um, you should hear that the drums are just they're actually sounding a lot quieter, right? And that's because of the compressor is making things quieter. We don't want that. So I do want to find this sweet spot that there's still a bit of a dynamic range in our drum elements that sounds more or less real, but that things are gluing. So I'm gonna move this threshold up until I feel that that's right. And as I do that, I'm not, I'm trying not to look at the needle, because I want to do it based off sound, not just where the needle is, right? Like there's a lot of videos that say, ah, compress your drums to negative four and then you're done. No, you shouldn't think of that. Like if you like the sound of it like this, then that's what you should go with. Always go with a feel versus what you're seeing. So try to level the threshold of your compressor based on the feeling of what you're listening to. Definitely a slower attack, 30 seconds is good. And the release, a faster release will make it a bit more punchy. Watch what happens when I um, put the release to the, the highest it can go in this, is, which is about a second. Now watch with the fast release. You see how things are just a bit snappier, a bit punchier. So if you're looking for that snappy, punchy sound, you want to have a faster release. So that's the first trick, compression. Use your threshold, base it off feel of gluing your drum elements together. Do a slow attack and then a fast release if you want that punchy sound. As for the makeup gain, add makeup gain if you'd like. You can always add gain later um, by adding gain in the volume or adding gain in different areas. So don't worry too much about the makeup gain. Okay, let's do stock logic compressor now, which is more or less the same thing. You can use any one of the tabs up here. You might maybe start with a vintage FET, try to get a similar uh, slow attack. So maybe around here, fast release, and we'll just bump the threshold. And it was noticeably louder because that makeup gain was uh, here. There's, I had the uh, auto gain. I'm just gonna set that to off so it's not as loud. Don't be fooled by adding gain. If you do add gain in a compressor or have your auto gain set to on, that can confuse beginners, especially because volume always makes things sound better. So if I'm listening to it like with lots of gain, that sounds, that sounds sweet to me, right? Like gain is awesome, volume is awesome. So don't be fooled by gain all the time. So that's why I usually like to have my auto gain is off. So I'm focusing on the dynamic and feeling of the instrument 
versus just how loud it is. The second thing I like to add, and by the way, none of these things are things you have to add. You can add anything that makes it feel good and makes it sound good. Next thing I like to add is a distortion plugin. I use this Decapitator Distortion by Sound Toys, and I'm gonna show you in a second a stock Logic plugin you can use. Sometimes I start with a preset with drums. Other times I will just increase the drive and then do some of these presets down here. And again, I just go by feeling. I'll increase the drive and then I'll do a dry wet, meaning how much of that plugin, dry meaning none of the plugin is really working, wet meaning the full plugin is working. So I'll start with wet and then I'll bring it down. And of course I will turn it on. I'll turn the compressor on too. Notice how crunchy that sounds. Just with compression and distortion, dry, we have this. Now compression, distortion. Significantly punchier. Let's do a stock logic distortion. We can just try a regular distortion. There might be a preset in here for drums. There isn't, but we can try warm. I will just try this out. That's what I thought would happen. I'm gonna increase the tone, the output. Let's try another distortion plugin. That one's not very flexible. Let's try something else. Let's bring up all the distortion plugins because I'm curious now. Let's try a bit of overdrive. Distortion just helps it give a bit more crunch. It's actually giving more harmonics to the entire drum set. So it's always a good thing to add to make it stand out more in your song. First way, compression. Second thing is distortion. The third thing is what I like to add is tape. I like to recreate what a tape machine would sound like. And there are two paid plugins that I bounce back and forth. The first paid plugin that I use is called Tape, T-A-I-P by Baby Audio. And then the second tape plugin I use is by Waves. It's the J37. So I would bounce back and forth between presets in both of these plugins just to give it a little bit more saturation and try to make it sound like it's running through a tape machine. And then unfortunately, in the stock plugins in Logic don't really have tape. Um, you could try adding a little more drive here or there, but there's not, there's no stock Logic tape plugin. So that I know of. If you know of any, please let me know in a comment. So let's just try with this just tape machine. I would start with a preset here, drum bus glue. That sounds cool. Add the distortion. Now that they're all on there, and I've done this quickly, things are just sounding a little too snappy, too in your face. So I would just kind of have the three plugins that I'm using up and I'd try to go one at a time and listen what's happening. So compressor. Sounds nice to me. Okay, let's add the distortion. It's a bit too bright, so I'm gonna bring the brightness down. Add the tape. Now, going farther from here. 
the best way uh, that you can make your drum sound awesome is finding the right drum sound. So whether that's hiring the the best drum performer you have in your city or that you know of, great. Other than that, you have to pick the best drum samples that you can find. So getting the good getting good libraries and spending the time finding the right kick drum, the right snare drum, and the right hi-hats, the right toms, whatever you're using. Breaking outside of that, you can always layer drum sounds together. You don't just have to have one kick drum. You can layer two kick drums together. You don't just have to have one snare drum. You can layer snare drums together. That is a big caveat and a prerequisite to getting a really, really good drum sound. Beyond that, you can always add EQ on your bus uh, track. And if you think you need a little more in the, in the low end, you can do a little bit of shelf or you can add something in here if you want a bit more snappiness, a bit more brightness. Maybe you want to duck out some frequencies. You can always add an EQ to your drum bus as well. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think uh, in a comment. And if you have any other ways to make your drums sound more punchy, let me know in a comment. I'm curious to know what you think and I hope to see you in the next video.